Hey, listen, man, I'm just saying don't make no damn sense. This is the far future, and they got chain swords, right? But then why does nobody use a chain spear, okay? That feels like the far superior hand-to-hand -hand space combat weapon. Earlier this summer, I created my most ambitious monstrosity, a kit-bashed Chaos War Dog. And in that video, which is located right here, I asked for your help in determining what to name this beast and what the Legion should be so I know which paint scheme to go with. Well, it didn't take long for Scott here to break the internet and in coming up with the name Corn Dog, which also determines our Legion as World Eaters. Bonus accidental nerdy lore points for this one, because before they betrayed him, the Emperor referred to the World Eaters as his war dogs. Oh boy, do I love me some lore. From very early on in the building process of this kit bash, I envisioned a very worn and beat up war dog that has seen hundreds of battles. So we're going to be going full grimdark here, and there's no better place to start than some chipped weathered armor plates. Burnt Umber gives us a great dark rust color that we will see underneath the final armor color. I'll just spray every panel that will be white or red later and then airbrush over all of those same areas with chipping medium. Now chipping medium can be a little bit fickle when shooting it through the airbrush. You can either thin it down so you get a nice smooth coat or you can keep it kind of as is so it's a little bit chunky and spits out. And that's the direction I'm going with this one. So I get some irregular depth to the chipping sections and this will actually create some hairline cracks through the armor later without me having to do anything to create them. The majority of our armor plates are going to be a bright off-white, which is perfect for any form of weathering on models because it really stands out when there's a big contrast between bright colors and dark grime and weathering. The kind of airbrush work I'm showing here is the perfect stuff to do for beginners because you can't really mess anything up. We're just trying to hit each of these panels as best we can, and we can practice our brush control in that process. But if we have overspray, which is bound to happen, it's no big deal. We're going to come back in and paint those other sections later anyway, so it doesn't matter if we make some mistakes. Speaking of airbrushing, you may notice I'm using an interesting looking airbrush for this project. This is the special edition Kiev Infinity by Harder and Steenbeck. And it features artwork on the side by Ukrainian artist Angela Dimitrenko. There are two different versions of this airbrush for sale and a portion of the sale of each airbrush will be directly donated to a specific hospital in Kiev to ensure medical care continues to be available in this dark time. Once all of our armor plates are covered in our off white and red, we get to do the fun stuff, paint chipping. I take a damp firm brush and poke and prod the armor plates gently to create the chipping effect. It's really important to make sure your top layer of paint is completely dry before you do this step. Otherwise, the moisture on your brush will reactivate that paint and cause it to smear over the dark brown chips that we're exposing underneath. And you can play it by ear and remove as much or as little of the upper paint layer as you like here. And I'm going to be removing just enough to create some very clear, interesting looking chipped areas, but not so much that we can't do more work later with weathering that beautiful white upper layer. And the red on the shoulder pads does still give us a nice chipping effect, but I think you can probably see that if you use a dark paint with a dark rust under layer and create the chip, it's not going to create as much visual impact as a bright color. I think if I wanted a really dark armor color with chipping, I'd use a much lighter rust color underneath. So we'd be flipping that bright and dark contrast and still have an impressive effect. Our corn dog is covered in quite a bit of metals. He is a robot after all. I like to mix my own darker colors of silver with a little bit of brown to add a little grime to it and to cut back the shine a little bit. And I use inks for this. Don't feel like you need to own 10 different bottles of silver paint to really get a good effect. In fact, it's really quick and easy to mix just what you need when you need it. Now you can start to see why we weren't worried about overspray with the airbrush. We're already covering a vast majority of that with just our first pass of these base coats. 
I'm not gonna dull down our warm gold like I did with the silver. I'm only gonna use this on the trim and there's not a ton of it. And I want that warm gold tone to work with the warm red we have on the model. And while we will grime it up, it's important that the richness shines through in the places that are not gonna be weathered at the end. One thing that I try to be careful with when I'm painting in the grimdark style is to not get too dark too fast. If everything is dark and grime on top of dark and grime, you're just going to lose all sense of details of the model. And at a five foot distance, you're going to hardly be able to see what it is. To help prevent this, I'm going to go through with a dry brush of a brighter silver and put that over top of all the dark metallics that I base coated. I need this for all the fun details and edges on our model to not get lost. And we've got a lot of steps of weathering yet to come. So it's best that I do this now before I risk dry brushing that silver over top of that grime and rust later and kind of mess with the effect. After this, all the silvers get a liberal coat of Nuln Oil. I find that big models with a lot of details and very few flat surfaces are the ideal use for a heavy acrylic wash. This will be the only time we're going to use black to create depth. And it's important that our darkest crevices are quite dark. Otherwise, all those details will meld together in the future steps. I've been really loving this dark brown enamel wash lately. It looks so good over warm metallics or really over any warm color at all. And it's super easy to just slop it on and get a good looking effect. It also runs the edges between colors really well and gives you that nice crisp dark line when it's dry. And so it's super fast to get a good look that you can even wipe away later with any mistakes you made with a Q-tip and it really is user friendly that way. There's a lot of smaller details on this model that we're gonna work on as we go, but I like to really dig into a couple of sections that are gonna make the most impact and work on making those grimy and grim dark right away. That kind of sets the tone for the whole paint job. Enamel rust streaks are one of those go-to products with just so many uses that I'm so glad that I keep it always in stock in my painting arsenal. I love to use it as a layer of patina over silvers, then wipe off all the raised surfaces and edges to give it that natural effect of rust collecting in the areas where moisture and decay would gather. It also really shines in creating a discolored streaking effect. And as you can see, it's just like magic over a really light paint like this bright ivory. You just place down the enamel on any rivets or cracks on the surface and then draw down a few vertical streaks. And then take a clean brush, damp with mineral spirits, and make a few brush strokes in the direction that that liquid would naturally fall off the surface. This removal step with this product can be a little bit finicky and you may take a couple of attempts to really get it down correctly and that's fine. The good news is if you remove too much of it and your streak completely disappears, you can just go back through put more on, and then attempt again. Today's video is brought to us by Cobalt Keep. Cobalt Keep has a ton of amazing hobby products, including bases in just about any size we use for any game. But the trick is they have little notches in the bottom with a spot where a magnet that's included with the set fits right in. They also have other cool things like these display cases where you can put all your war bands, have them on display at home, and then just grab a case, head onto the game store, and you're ready for play. Also, they got a metal sheet on the bottom, so you're magnetized guys. Ain't going anywhere. But most exciting is the Kickstarter they've got going on right now for this thing. It's a wet and dry palette combo that stacks on itself. Even if you have more than one palette, they would all stack together. And it's both compact, but full of features. Like a lot of dry palette wells for mixing washes, oils, enamels, and metallic paints, and spots to put your pots so they don't spill, also, controllable airflow so your paint doesn't dry out or get too watered down between sessions. So, check out the Kickstarter for the cool wet palette thing. And also, they got brushes on there now as well, as well as their website for all the other awesome products they carry. Thank you, Cobalt Keep for sponsoring the video. You know, painting in a grimdark style is so very different from my typical painting style. And I really, really enjoy doing it, but I haven't really sat and thought about why. 
I really enjoy it until I was working on this project. This approach to painting is so different from traditional miniature painting. You're just less concerned about tiny, finicky blends and details throughout the majority of your painting process. It's much more like sculpting a giant tree stump with a chainsaw. Just go with me on this analogy, okay? It will maybe make sense. Each cut is one done with purpose, and it gets you one step closer to your final result. But each of those cuts can only go straight through the wood at the angle of your choosing. Each cut has value, and the detail work at the end to bring the piece to life doesn't work if the shapes and volumes weren't given respect in each of those individual cuts along the way. Okay, not making sense? All right, let's keep going. Each step in painting in the grimdark style, while not necessarily difficult to execute, is a cut of that chainsaw. Layers of effects over base coats all compound on top of each other and give us a final result that we couldn't achieve simply by using traditional painting techniques alone. And knowing that each step has value and knowing which steps to keep and which steps would just be too much is very important in the final piece we create. Just like we can't keep cutting back more and more of that wood because we'll have nothing left at the end. Just slapping on more stuff doesn't make grimdark look better. Just base coating everything and slapping a layer of streaking grime also doesn't make something grimdark. Grimdark is chaos, nature, grit, and grime, all together in some odd harmony. Each step has its purpose, and experimenting with each of these steps on each new mini is a wonderful journey in and of itself. I realize that I'm using a lot of weird products from a lot of different companies in this video because there's so much cool stuff to paint in the grimdark style. If you want to support the channel, you can check out the links down in the video description and pick up any of these products or the other stuff I use in miniature painting. And if you check out Umbrella Games, it's where I go to get all my models, my paints, and all my gear, and you get another 5% off from their already discounted MSRP prices by using coupon code NINJAN. For a lot of their stuff, that means you get 20% off MSRP, a price you just can't find anywhere. One thing that I really think makes any model stand out, but especially in the grim dark style because we have so many darks, is to push our brights and our highlights to the extreme. Rock the mic like a vandal. We do need to go about this in a very selective way, however. Just pushing everything up with many more layers of highlights on top of highlights will kill all the atmosphere we're trying to create here. I'm gonna focus on a few key parts of the model and really push up the highlights there. The intestines and the face really stand out as important details on this model, especially since their surfaces are so different from all the hard metallics we're seeing everywhere else. As I was procrastinating on which legion symbol to put on this model, I decided to slap another coat of black primer across the base and get that set for us working on that in just a little bit. All right, time to start with some blood effects to fully christen this corn model. I've decided to freehand a bloody hand on his groin tabard. At what point did the groin tabard go out of style? We could bring it back. Anyway, the red hand is the coolest of the world eaters iconography, and it seems to fit with all the blood we're about to add to this guy. I'm using a particularly dark blood color for this, as well as the first pass of spray and splotches. This will give us an older, coagulated look on the blood. It's also really fun to hit a brush loaded with blood with the spurt of air from your airbrush to add some textured spray to various parts all around the model. All right, let's knock out this base real quick with a couple of fun and easy techniques that will make the base really feel like it's in the same world as our war dog. First, we do two quick dry brush layers of a mid-tone gray and then a brighter gray. I then hose down the entire base with thin streaking grime through my crappy old airbrush. I'm always worried that enamels might screw up my nice airbrush, but I don't know if there's any truth to that. I then take makeup sponges dabbed in mineral spirits to remove all the streaking grime from the raised areas. This gives us a nice dark and smooth blend up from the cracks and recesses to the highlights we dry brushed earlier. 
Next, I'm gonna try out a new product I've never used before, Liquid Pigments from AK Interactive. And I'm not sure how light it's gonna be when it dries. So before I add any more to this base, I really wanna let this thing dry all the way and I can come back and see how I wanna fiddle with the base at the end. All right, back to our corn dog. And I'm gonna start working on some of those final details that are gonna really push this thing over the top by the time we're done. I need to bring some more attention to his singular working eye, and then I'll also sponge on some more blood in both a darker color and a brighter red color to create some variation. And finally, I need to do a bit more highlighting where I need those areas to really pop. And if you see me fiddling with all these final details, know that they will help our final product, but you need to know when you wanna call it quits for yourself because you can really get lost in all the scratches and dings and dots needed for these final steps. Making sure you get some of these final white and silver dots and scratches does really help differentiate the surfaces. But when you have a big model like this, or a lot of models, it can be daunting to try to highlight all the stuff you'd like to. Just make sure every highlight you do is a small line or scratch. There shouldn't be any uninterrupted edge highlights on any surface. Our corn dog here is far too battered to have a clean finish on any edge. Final step is to put some pigment powders, both on the muzzle of our Gatling gun and at various points around the base to really bring that to life. And with that, our corn dog is complete. I mean, it kind of does have ketchup and mustard colors now that I think about it. Shit. Thank you for sticking with me to the end of the video. I got some questions for you. Do you like painting in the grimdark style yourself? Um, do you like it when I do it here on the channel? Are these videos interesting? Also, do you like when I kit bash a thing and then paint the thing? Is that interesting as well? That's probably uh, too many questions. But in all serious, I do appreciate all your comments and feedback. It helps me learn and it helps me make future videos better. And if you wanna support the channel to help me make more of those videos, you can check down in the link below for my Patreon site where you can support me for just a couple of bucks a month and get some fun rewards like access to my exclusive Discord server and my weekly quick tip videos. I'm gonna see you again real soon and sometime between now and then, make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray. And this is what I've become, a lore channel. Great, lore. Oh, I love me some good lore. Okay, still not making sense. Let's keep going.